Hey everyone and welcome back to Upload the Download and today we're going to be doing a comparison video of Ubuntu 12.10 and Windows 8. We'll be comparing the two in six different areas, installation, interface, optimization, features, programs and support. So let's get started. Installation. Let's look at the installation of Ubuntu 12.10. Now, as we can see, it looks very clean, very graphical, and easy to navigate. And near the end of the installation, it even takes into welcoming the user with some information on what Ubuntu has to offer. One thing that is really important here, though, is that it allows you to set up a dual boot on your system if there's already another operating system installed. A few things to keep note of. The first is that on older computers, I've found that the Ubuntu 12.10 installation disk doesn't always work. The second is that once Ubuntu has gone through and installed, it only has to restart once. And last of all, you also have the option of booting Ubuntu from the CD. Now for Windows 8. This is the release preview installation, so it's not retail, but the process is essentially identical between the two. From this we can see that graphically it's not a particularly welcoming installation and it doesn't look too fancy, but it does get the job done. There are no options for dual booting in the Windows 8 installation because Windows as per usual wants to own the machine that it's going on. The Windows 8 installation disk does work however on a lot of the older computers I've tried it on, unlike the Ubuntu disk. The other thing to mention is that unlike Ubuntu, you can't boot Windows 8 from the disk alone. You need to install it to use it. Now onto the interface. How does this interface work? Is it a good interface for use in a workplace or is it a good interface for use at home? Ubuntu 12.10 is continuing on the path with Unity, working on having an interface that's geared up for the casual user, having large icons to show your apps in the sidebar, though at the same time having the search tool in the Unity visor, I guess we'll call it, to give speedy access to programs, files, web searching, all, all that stuff for professional users. However, the removal of the menu panes along the top that all of us long-time Ubuntu fans were quite used to can be increasingly irritating. If this interface was placed in a work environment, I feel that it would fare relatively well. It bears quite some resemblance now to the Mac user interface, which is used quite relentlessly in graphics design and video production industries. Windows 8 with its tiles is definitely going to create a stir in the education systems and workplaces that decide to upgrade to it. Windows 8 can be incredibly nimble to use. It boasts more hotkeys, multitasking functionality, as well as increased speed compared to Windows 7 when installed on solid state drives. However, from my experiences providing tech support at schools running Windows 7, if they upgrade to Windows 8, they're going to be lost in clueless. Windows 8 expects you to remember that certain controls are there rather than actually showing you they exist. The chimes menu, the multitasking menu, access to your apps by right-clicking, access to tabs in Internet Explorer by right-clicking, all these things involve hidden controls that require you to remember their existence. This, I feel, will most certainly cause issues amongst teachers and students who don't have the experience of using computer systems in their entirety. Optimization. Both systems on newer hardware run really well and very quickly. As we found in an earlier boot test of mine where Ubuntu 12.10 came only slightly in the lead with a boot plus login time of 24 seconds 49, where Windows 8 received a time of 26 seconds 26. These tests were done on a standard 7200.10 RPM hard drive. So both these operating systems are pretty quick and they seem to keep their speed even after you've installed a few programs and files on them, which is definitely desirable. The minimum system requirements for Ubuntu 12.10, according to the Ubuntu website, is a one gigahertz processor, one gigabyte of RAM, five gigabytes of disk space with 15 gigabytes recommended and basic video support. For Windows 8, the minimum requirements according to the Microsoft website is a 1 GHz processor, 1 GB of RAM, 16 GB of disk space, and a Microsoft DirectX 9 graphics device with WDDM driver. Let's just look briefly at some of the key features that both these systems come with. Now, Ubuntu 12.10 has a very wide range of supported hardware. Uh, when compared to Windows 8, this is quite evident. Whereas Windows 8 only supports two processor types, 32-bit and 64-bit, or x86 and 64, Ubuntu 12.10 supports x86, 64, ARM, and PPC. They both have cloud storage. They both support multiple user accounts. However, Ubuntu supports concurrent user accounts. 
which means you can have multiple users logged in at the same time. As for file system support, it's going to be quite obvious who wins here. Ubuntu 12.10 is backed by a very compatible Penguin kernel, meaning that there's not many file systems it can't read. However, there are a few new formats that the Linux kernel hasn't quite got to grips with yet, and that would be EXFAT and the new Windows 8 server file system, REFS. Ubuntu 12.10 has removed the Unity 2D interface as an option when logging in. Now, of course, Ubuntu developers didn't cut support for the minimum requirement machines. They improved 3D Unity so that it essentially has Unity 2D built in. In my experience, though, some older computer systems don't seem to recognize this mix and they struggle to load the desktop. It also causes various problems when trying to run Ubuntu 12.10 in a virtual environment now. Unlike Ubuntu 12.04, you can't force a Unity 2D login. On the Windows 8 scale of things, we see some dropped features because of hardware that simply doesn't exist in older machines. Of course, this kind of thing is the same for Ubuntu if you're talking about things like multi-touch enabled controls. However, quite a few missing features are software related. Windows XP mode for backwards compatibility is no longer supported in Windows 8. And interestingly, Windows 8 and Windows 8 Pro do not come with DVD playback compatibility built in. You have to download an app to do so. As for Windows RT, there isn't support for DVD playback at all. I'm sure in any case, installing VLC Media Player on any operating system should help to fix this issue. This seems like a lot of hassle to go through to watch your favorite flick. Programs. Both Ubuntu 12.10 and Windows 8 have their own built-in application stores, where you can purchase programs and games as well as download free software. These stores go about displaying their apps in very different ways. Windows 8 takes up your entire screen, keeping things really clean and tidy, similar to what you'd see on a tablet. Ubuntu 12.10, however, does it in hierarchies and lists. Now, the Windows Store with Windows 8 is definitely not a mess like the iOS 6 App Store, but the problem is it just doesn't seem to offer the same scope of apps that the Ubuntu Software Center does. You'll notice that Ubuntu doesn't market its Ubuntu Software Center as a store. That's because it's more geared up towards distributing open source software. In this regard, if you're after free software for your computer, the Windows Store is more like the Mac App Store, which is aimed more at selling commercial software rather than giving users access to free programs. For this reason, I think that the Ubuntu Software Center seems to be more in favor of users than the Windows Store. However, both Windows 8 and Ubuntu 12.10 have both expressed their commercial interests by adding shopping panes onto your desktop and interface it's really quite irritating that they're trying to constantly put advertisements on our computer. Both these systems have their own command line applications, though Ubuntu's console has far more functionality than the Windows command prompt does. Ubuntu definitely gets brownie points, however, for having a full Office suite on the default install. It's no secret that in terms of Office software, Windows does have a very large leap. But if you've just installed a fresh Windows installation, you wouldn't be able to take advantage of having Microsoft Office unless you went out and bought it. Unlike Windows 8, a Ubuntu 12.10 clean install comes with both graphics editing tools as well as a full Office suite. So for a clean install of an operating system, Ubuntu definitely offers more here. Support. Finally, what support do you have for these two systems? Being that Ubuntu 12.10 is open source, you can expect a very communal source of support. If you need help, have a technical problem, etc., you're going to need to know how to use forms, IRC, and read documentation manuals. With Windows 8, on the other hand, of course, you still get the options of the forms and communal supports that are online, but you also, because you've paid for Windows 8, you have the option of calling up Microsoft support. As it goes, the best kind of support for both these systems would have to be communal-based tech forums. I would say that support-wise, they're nearly even, but Microsoft offers a little bit more in this department. So there we go. This has been my comparison of Ubuntu 12.10 and Windows 8. To summarize, these systems are aiming to have interfaces that can be used by anyone, though Windows 8 may have to choose one and stick with it for it to work. Ubuntu 12.10 and Windows 8 are both very nicely optimized, nimble and quick, and offer a lot of hotkeys and shortcuts that shorten the amount of time taken to navigate the system. Ubuntu 12.10 still has issues with NVIDIA graphics cards, as well as connecting to NAS storage drives. Windows 8 still relies quite heavily on a centralized registry system, which really is a bad thing for flexibility. Also, Windows 8 can't play DVDs by default. So there we have it, Ubuntu 12.10 and Windows 8 
two systems prepared for a modern age. Windows 8 may be have been $40 to upgrade, whereas Ubuntu 12.10 remains to be free, as well as every upgrade after that. As much as I like the new direction these systems are taking, I think I'll be staying back in the past with my lists and interface designed for desktops and not tablets. This has been Upload to Download. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, as well as boot tests, go check out my channel at youtube.com slash upload the download.